time when I saw a bridal party in a Paris restaurant, the bride sitting and reading a comic paper while the groom played billiards with the witnesses. <laughs> oh, I thought, with such a beginning, what a sequel and what an ending. <laughs> he played billiards on his wedding evening while she read a comic paper, but that is neither here nor there. Do you know, Amelia, I think you would have done better to have kept him. Remember, I was the first to say, forgive him, recollect. Then you would have been married now and have had a home. Remember that Christmas in the country? How happy you were with your fiance's parents and how you enjoyed the happiness of their home. Yet long for the theater. Yes, Amelia, dear, home is the best of all next to the theater. And the children, you understand, but that you don't understand. <laughs> it must be because they think he has something to do with theater engagements because he's connected with the government. Perhaps you were there yourself and tried to influence him. I don't trust you any too much. <laughs> but I know he's not concerned about you, and you seem to have a grudge against him. <laughs> Come to see us this evening, Amelia. And show you are not angry with us, or angry with me at any rate. I don't know why, but it's so uncomfortable to have you an enemy. Possibly it's because I came in your way. Or, I really don't know just why. Our acquaintance has been so peculiar. When I saw you the first time, I was so afraid of you, so afraid that I couldn't look you in the face. Still, as I came and went, I always found myself near you. 
I couldn't risk being your enemy, so I became your friend. But there was always a discordant note when you came to our house because I saw that my husband couldn't bear you. And that was as annoying to me as an ill-fitting gown. And I did all I could to make him friendly towards you, but before he consented, you announced your engagement. Then came a violent friendship, so that in a twinkling it appeared as if you only dared show your real feelings once you were betrothed. And then, how was it later? I didn't get jealous. How wonderful. And I remember when you were Potin's godmother, I made Bob kiss you. He did it, but you were so confused. That is, I didn't notice it at the time, thought about it later, but never thought about it before. Now, Why are you silent? You haven't said a word. Let me go on talking. You sat there and your eyes had loosened out of me all these thoughts that lay like raw silk in their cocoon. Thoughts, suspicious thoughts, perhaps. Let me see. Why did you break your engagement? Why do you come so seldom to the house these days? Well, why won't you visit us tonight?
review your work. Calculating your mischief as a pilot does his course, collecting your tribute. Poor Amelia. You know, I really feel sorry for you because you are so unhappy. Unhappy like a wounded animal and spiteful because you are wounded. Dry stop. 